His roster here is money picks. Here's my voice, Night Train Lane, <laughs> Deion Sanders. Surprise, surprise <laughs> on their roster. But Jordan Reed is a surprise. One of the yep. only Jordan Reeds we've seen throughout the tournament. Great for route running. He runs crisp routes, also great to stretch defenses vertically. And then Moss and McNabb. McNabb has the ability to get the ball out of his hand quicker than most other quarterbacks you'll see in this tournament. That's what that gunslinger ability does. On the other side, the youth. Oh, my God, the jacket it's is back. back. Oh, my goodness. I, the lettuce on point. You got Woo. the tiger jacket. This guy is just on spot. warm in Gucci, here. call this man. He needs more jackets. <laughs> but in all seriousness, young kid playing some of the best he's ever played. And let's talk about how the monkey's off his back. He's never won a single elimination game before in a tournament. He did that by beating Hollywood. So now he's playing with house money. Three and one in this tournament. Lost a joke, but beat Hollywood in our final game yesterday. And here are his picks. Polly Kraus and then that 96 Dion. Love that Polly Kraus in the secondary. Great hands. Catches a lot of passes that come his way. So watch for that throughout the course of the game. Deion Sanders, nothing to joke about as well. And then Randy Moss, you here again on this, Randy Moss, Chad Johnson. They're, I mean, they're on every <laughs> roster for the most part. But let's zoom in on that tiger right there. You can see you got the green leaves. Ooh. Got the monkey off his back, but replaced it with that tiger. And he's looking ready to go. Locked in. Uh, the only bad news I got for you is, well, I'll tell you in a minute here. First, look at that scouting report brought to you by Xbox. I don't want to waste all my good stuff. No, <laughs> I got some good stuff, too. But for Spot Me, please, ride this wave that you have competing on. You're 3-0. You're and oh, You come in now. You get that uh, victory. You are playing lights out. This is the same type of uh, a game that you've tried to compete in the past. You kind of keep competing here, finish this game off against Young Kiv. And on the other side, what about the youngster from Seattle? Well, he, he's never won that single elimination game before, right? He beat Hollywood. Now all he has to do, he doesn't have to worry about never winning a single elimination game now. He just has to finish, go out and win a championship, young youngster. What's your news? Well, these guys have not faced each other this year. But Spot Me Please is 3-0 and against the gun bunch of Bugs and Skimbo. Fantastic. And so that's what he runs. You did your homework. I've done my homework. Bad news for Spot Me Please. He lost in the quarterfinals a year ago to a guy you might know, Eric Problem Right. Heard of him. You ready for my news? Bring it. I got my top men working on this. <laughs> they inform me that whoever's sitting in the left chair of these chairs that they're sitting on stage yep. has won eight of the nine games we've seen. And there is a fumble. <laughs> Woo! So he eight. had it, then a big hit stick, so it wasn't a catch, and it's just going to be incomplete. Boy, I saw that ball pop out after the hit stick. Antonio Gates was big for him yesterday against Hollywood, and that's who he goes to, third and five. Yeah, and what you're going to get from Spot Me Please on the defense side of the ball, a lot of unique play calls, mixes his coverage up, mix, mixes his blitzes up. Tough to read. There's that gun bunch that I talked about that Spot Me Please has had some success against. He beat Books 29 to 21 in the Madden Classic, beat Skimbo in the Madden Classic, and then he faced Boogs again and beat him in the semifinals. Love that. Love that playmaker right there. He takes advantage of controlling that Chad Johnson as that playmaker feature. For those of you new at the game, you're able to control your virtual receiver, tell them where to go on the field. That's where you saw that four-yard completion. Kim going to work, has a man, and that is old. Oh. Had it, and he dropped it. And once again, though, you see the change of pace from Spot Me Please. He sends a blitz right through that left B gap, not custom to seeing that. So dials it up all over the field. Is it coming here? Is it off the edge? Is it coverage? Is it cover two man? Where is the pressure coming from? And what's the coverage behind it? Third and six. And I'll tell you what, right here, this left chair right here has eight W's. This right chair has one W. That's the difference of this term. How about that right there? That chair is hot. Stand the day, baby. Well, they won't tell you the guy <laughs> on the left is usually the higher seed. The higher seed. <laughs> and he drops it there on first down, so it'll be second and ten. We had some upsets early in the tournament. We had some 
guys move on. You saw Lowe's, he was 31st. Bull Tracks is 27. But as we've moved on, those top 10 guys, a lot of them able to hold on. Second and 10. Wide open is Randy Moss on a comeback route. Yeah, boy, you don't see a comeback route no. too often, but can't take advantage of that. He runs a, uh, call it a curl flat style concept, run a flat pattern, curl behind it. Nice read. So now he's out of the 39. He'll throw this one up. Challenge Alexander in a great user play on the swat by that man right there. Great click on. You're going to see the top of your screen right here. Highlight on there. You'll see it's going to say user swat. That's a click on by Spot Me Please. He then presses the X button to get the user swat. That's a great play. That's the most feared Maurice Alexander. But in this secondary of talent, that's the least feared guy for young kids. Couldn't get his feet in bounds there. Ezekiel Elliott will hang his head. Third and 10 coming up. Tough to convert on third down against Spot Me Please because of his unique play calling. You first read the safety, it's okay. I see one safety, I see two safety. That might tell me it's cover two, but he disguises his coverage and disguises where his pressure comes from. Just outside of field goal range on third and 10, and there's the heat. And that'll bring up fourth and 10, and he'll go for it. Yeah, and on the previous play, you saw he sends a passive pressure on Kiv, played a cover three shell. Now on third down, he comes in and sends absolute gas off both edges, sends six players, and plays a cover two shell. Now fourth down, what do we get? Is it passive pressure? Is he going to blitz a slot corner? So fourth and 10 at the 39. Kip trying to read the defense. You can see he's having difficulty understanding what's going on. So balanced, you never know where the pressure is going to come. Play clock down to five. Kip wants Moss on this play. Has time, makes the throw, and Moss Ooh, makes train. the catch. Night train lane on the coverage. Yeah, that's a good read because that's going to get open against a lot of different coverages that. Inside release, then outside release, breaking corner pattern. So good recognition from Kiv there. Needed time for it to develop, and he got it. And there's Chad Johnson. Makes a man miss and takes it to the three. Missed tackle, but boy, what a big drive right now from Kiv. He's had some fourth down, some big third down conversions. Now he got the ball in the three. Going to punch this one in. Undefeated in that jacket, by the way. First and goal. And Ezekiel Elliott, that's why he has him on his team for those red zone opportunities. And Young Kim strikes first. Undefeated in Madden, undefeated in life. When you wear that jacket, <laughs> you are a winner. Take a look at it again. Easy peasy from Zeke. Untouched inside power O, pulling guard. It's got to be a, a difficult mindset there for Spot Me Please. You know, he, he played the defense he wanted to. He changed up his play calls. Wasn't able to get a stop there against Kiv. Kiv really in control of his offense there. You know, spot me so nice. We've had a lot of bombs thrown around this weekend. He's, spot me, please, is like a, oh, shucks. <laughs> oh, man. Yes, sir. G. No, Willikers, sir. he scored on me. <laughs> you can't help but root for him. A yeah, family man, he talked about his story of his out here a year ago, newborn son. Wife gave him the green light to go, go earn some cash, and he did it for the fam. And now he's got to go to work, trailing by a touchdown. And anytime he comes out in this formation, you think run first, but you also have to pay attention to a, a sideline corners. He loves the, a, a bench concept off this edge. He wants to hit Moss out here uh, in that left slot. Second and four. Quick throw. That's Chad Johnson. It takes a big hit from Krause. But he'll pick up the first down. Yeah, and that's the, he coughed that ball out of bounds there. So nice break for Spot Me Please as he fumbles out of bounds. Changes his formation once again here. Single back punch under center. And McNabb never saw Randall screaming through the gap. Good pressure off that right edge. You'll see Kip primarily stay in this nickel blitz two look. This is the defense that most of the community runs for good reason. Gets that pressure off either edge right there. In game one, we already had 9,000 points by this time. 
Second and 17, throws it where the heat's coming from, and Moss will reach for those extra yards, make it third and two. He carried the two on the 9,000, but I mean, a lot of points in that first one. This one looks to be a little bit more of a methodical game. Of course, you remember that game we had with Spot Me Please and Strafing yesterday. That's, this game certainly feels like it could be like that. These guys feeling each other out here in the first corner. Let's go. There's Ricky on, Williams. Ricky. Let's go. And the former Longhorn will take it to the crib. Beautiful play design, great stick. Kiv shoots the interior A gap between the center and the guard. You're then going to see Spot Me Please recognize that user play by Kiv in the middle of the defense. He wisely cuts off the left tackle, and he is there. Watch this. Kiv shoots the gap, and then bang, right up the middle of the field right there. Beautiful stick right there. Most players at home, if you're new, that's a great thing to pay attention to. Don't run directly into a user defender. Don't just run directly into your offensive line. Look to find open running lanes. Dion will juke his way to the 33. Tie game, 7-7. Seven, seven. Kiv will have it back. We're in the quarterfinals, game number two. Winner will face Skimbo in the semifinals. <laughs> Boogs and Joke is up next, and then Problem and Volt Tracks to end the day. I think I'll hang around. I'll stay. I'll stay for the for the food, but also stay for uh, that game too. So that man right there, the youngster from Seattle, trying to answer the spot me touchdown. Goes to Zeke. Zeke will pick up an easy first down. Move the chains, gain of five. Yeah, and for Kiv, his offense resembles a lot of what you see from guys like Skimbo in, in, in books. Play that gun bunch, take what the defense gives you, hit these uh, patterns out of the backfield to your halfback. And finds Randy Moss to the 29. Rodgers already over 100 yards in the first quarter. And I'll tell you what, he's got a little bit of monster in him too, doesn't he, right? <laughs> the, the quick play action pop passes work so well for him. Well, he's thrown for about 160 yards per game here in the tournament. His tempo's so fast too, right? I mean, look how quickly he gets in and out of plays. He's, he's so deliberate with everything he's doing. <laughs> And that's how the first quarter will come to an end. Tied 7-7. Spot me trying to stop this drive from Young Q. How many, how many Tigers do you think he's got on that jacket? 20. Not enough. In my opinion, can never have enough Tigers. And there is Eubanks. Uh -oh. And he almost came out of that. Brandon Eubanks, <laughs> take a look right here. Kid trying to split the safeties. You get the catch, but then you get the tip pick. Brandon Eubanks almost stumble recoveries out of that one, but now you're backed up in your own end zone. Yes, you got the pick, but this is a tough one to be in. It's a 64 overall silver making a big play. And now Kiv is going to try to dial up some pressure after the INT in the red zone. Yeah, how about that play distribution between both these guys? Kiv 17 passes, those two rushes, so really airing the ball out. Kiv throws the ball a lot. Second and 11. Come on. And Williams. This is tough to be in, okay? Third and 11 backed up on your own two. You can't run too many routes that develop downfield. You gotta look for a quick developing corner pattern that can open up for you here. In the shadow of his own end zone. Well, it's actually Young Kibbs in zone, as it says Seahawks. You get the point, quick throw. And I think that's just to give him a little yeah. bit of more room. Absolutely, you're calling that 100% correct. Fourth and five now, ball in the eight. This is really difficult to, to decide what you're gonna do in this situation. You punt but every time. You punt because it's just such a short field if you don't convert. You know you've had success against the gun bunch that's run by Kiv. Show some confidence, still the first half. Dion takes it at the 38, past midfield, and they'll mark him at the 49-yard line in plus territory. And it's important to note about Kiv. We've seen him on this stage so many times, and where we've seen him fall flat before is getting off the slow starts, and he gets behind trails, makes mistakes early and often. What we've seen thus far from this Madden Championship Series is, is a player that's emerging in front of our eyes. We keep talking about the youth. We keep talking about 
okay, when are these guys, Hollywood, True Boy, Kiv, when are they gonna step up to the plate and make a run deep in one of these tournaments? And we've seen them do that, but Kiv really playing another level right now. Picks up the blitz and finds Randy Moss. Young Kiv doesn't want to leave California. No, and he's asking for one stop himself now. Last time we heard a guy say one stop, that was Skimbo early on in that low game. Check out the heat that came in that he picked up. Yeah, here you go. Quick pressure is going to come off uh, from all angles here. You can see you get the press coverage on the outside. Randy Moss just absolutely torches the corner off that press coverage. You don't see press that was very Alexander. Often. Yep. Maurice Alexander. Burnt toast. The rare pickup of that blitz, though. Good pass protection. I mean, that, that starts with that, especially, you know, when you're playing a guy like Spot Me Please. You need to get your pass protection in order. Here we go. Ohio. First and 10 from the 27. Finds Jordan Reed. Look at this again. He was driving for Young Kiv and then the interception. But he was able to survive that. Forced Come on. Spot Me to punt, and then had the quick touchdown to Randy Moss, and now Spot Me's got to answer. Yeah, Spot Me putting together a little drive here. He's a little slower tendency in the way, pace of play than Kiv. But what ends up happening, he runs the ball so much, it opens up a deep pass downfield. Oh, just got rid of it. Young Kim's calling for a sack, and I'm inclined to agree. Yeah, screams off that right edge. That's only setting three defenders after the quarterback. And a quick developing blitz right there off that right edge. They call that in the grass. <laughs> They're able to get rid of it. Second and ten. Quick throw to Moss. Beautiful. Wide open. And that'll move the change to the 39-yard line. Great play design. Great play to call in that situation right there. He kept both tight ends off the right edge to pick up that pressure on nickel blitz. Give some time in the pocket to live with that throw. First and ten. Corner Let's out. Go. There's Let's Johnson. Go. And we're tied Come up. On, and now things are starting to heat up. Are we not getting great John Madden football right now? I'll tell you what. Both of these first games, take a look at this. This is a throw you only make when you've done it a thousand times. That corner you don't make that throw at home you do not make that throw home because when you go back and look at the tape and you look at instant replay you would say no that guy is covered but take a look you're going to see this outside corner take a look right here on the outside he's directly underneath it looks like it's completely locked up uh, spot me please precision right there down that sideline for the big score play action you're on first and ten in a tying game I was actually watching a little John Madden and Pat Summerall doing some work. It was Steelers Cardinals. DRC was a young man. Heinz Ward just a couple years in the league. That was a special broadcast crew. If they're A1A, we're down there at like Z1000. I'll, I'll tell you what, R RG, the John Madden of Call <laughs> Madden games, I'll tell you what. Second and two, Fumble. Come on, and Rodgers gets free. Lucky. That's all that happened. He, he had a streaking receiver over the middle of the field there. If he was able to get that up, that's where guys like Donovan McNabb play a big role there because they could get that ball out a little quicker than the Rodgers. Hey, you're talking about that gunslinger trait. Third and two. A nice find. And that's Jordy Nelson. His first catch of the game for 12 yards, but more importantly, a first down. Starting to dink and duck, and the ball is out. And lucky that wasn't a scoop and score. And you can tell by Spot Me Please reaction, he needed it. Yeah. Wow. Alexander just absolutely lays a hammer stick on Antonio Gates in that flat. Two turnovers now for Kiv. And this is a run commit that turns into a walk in the park. Set up by all of the previous plays that Spot Me Please has called throughout this game. He has a tendency to run on first down. And a fake. 
And Myers, and that's got to be the wrong button. You heard him say it. He hit the wrong button. Yikes. That's a costly mistake. We're going to remember that, because now it's a six-point game. We're going to have to remember that one. That's a tough one right there. Fake field goal run. I mean, fake field goal pass is not the answer. In a fake field goal run. <laughs> You get the run commit off that edge out there wide open. That's just too easy. But that was all set up by all his previous runs on first down. It's like, hey, do you want to play a game of catch? Take a look at this fake extra point. Myers. Uh, doesn't have the wheels. <laughs> <laughs> the most diabolical play in the history of diabolical, diabolical plays. Oh, my. Second and seven. Beautiful. Textbook right there that mix up your play calling right there caught Kiv off guard He goes blitzes that corner off that right edge Give no no uh, receivers open on that play We we're talking about the game before we got going today and you said spot me please is the best as the best dollar defense in all of Madden football This time Chad Johnson Man's up and picks up the first down. Yeah, it, it, it's not that everyone else doesn't run a great dollar. I, I think that you look at guys like Dubby runs a great dollar. Dubby would probably say he has the best dollar. But I love the tempo changes that Spot Me Please uses, the way he changes up his coverages, the way he blitzes from both slots, the way he'll blitz his corners. It's very confusing to play against. And I also love he'll also wrinkle in a little cover two man every now and then. And I find that to be something that's really difficult to play against. And that's what makes his dollar so much better than everyone else's. Yeah, the nickel is a little bit different. Oh, my goodness. Am I talking over another touchdown? Yes, I am. Wow. Story time with me. Hey, <laughs> it's a guarantee, OK? Anytime you start talking the story, Good things happen for somebody. <laughs> That's a important extra point. Kiv missed one in the group stage. And hello, it's a bomb from young Kiv. Polly Krause. So yeah, it's, it, it, <laughs> oh boy, it's, it's been a rough tournament for Paul Krause. He's been getting torched. We've seen how big he played in previous tournaments. But in this one, you're going to see yeah. him get toasted by that Chad Johnson. Not in the group stage, not in the round of 16. That was the guy that gave up the touchdown to problem. At the end of that one was serious Mo. Not impressed with Pauly Krause here at the end of the year. Now, if you're spot me, please, right now, you get two timeouts, 35 seconds, a lot of time to work with here, especially the two timeouts. You know, and, and I'm not I'm not bagging on Paul Krause. I mean, part of the deal is you're guarding Randy Moss yeah. and Chad Johnson out there. Well, and it's a pick! Well, 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 and that could be huge with only 32 seconds remaining in the half. Best players in the world make big plays the biggest times. Take a user. look right there. You're going to see on the screen, user learn. That's a click on play by Kiv. He read it from the jump. Great play. Now he can go for the dagger. Antonio Gates almost broke no free. Outs. No timeouts. Kiv's got no timeouts here. He can't mismanage this. Take a look right here. No timeouts. Under 20 to go. Can't take a sack. And he'll throw this away. That'll stop the clock. 14 seconds. These are some tender spaces. Yeah, and now <laughs> that's the band name, baby. <laughs> that's the band name. Wide open spaces, tender space. But now field goal's got to be on your mind here. You can't take a sack. You can't uh, fumble the ball in this spot. No sack. Second and 10. No timeouts, as Gibb said. 14 seconds left in the half. It's a huge opportunity for both of these players. He's got cut another shot here. He's got another shot to the end zone, but let's also, let's not forget the last time we saw someone in the red zone here try these high point passes. Now he's going to go for a field goal. Let's just forget about it. <laughs> let's just punch it in on third down. But you know what? We talked about the mentorship of a lot of the older players. He's played a lot of games with problem. That felt like a problem decision there. Yeah, I talked to Kiv quite a bit previously, and uh, one of the things he had said was part of the reason why he got into competitive Madden 
is because he would go into Problem Stream, Problem accepted him as part of the community and really groomed him there. Problem played him in a couple games, saw that he was a talented player. I mean, that's what it's all about, right? I mean, becoming part of the community and playing a game that we all enjoy at a high level, it's great to see guys like Kid now on the biggest stage. Four point game, we'll see if Spot Me will take a shot. He'll hand it off. And that's how the half will end. Started off slow in the first quarter, but really started to ramp up. And young Kiv getting that last second field goal with 14 seconds on the clock to take a four point lead after the interception on an incredible user interception. Yeah, Kiv making the big plays in that first half. You also saw Spot Me please take advantage of. of, of some opportunities there as well. We got that run commit from Kiv on first down. So that's all set up by his play calling. So this game right now is, is really going to come down to who doesn't make a mistake in the second half. That's what I want to see as we get into the second half. Well, we're just rolling on the quarterfinals. It's halftime with Dave. I need to talk Thank to him you, right Scott. now. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, I need Kivs. To get me that Kiv stock now. I need more <laughs> Kiv stock. Rico's it, on the phone It doesn't with his matter. I need guys. that Kiv stock now. There I'm going to say... 100% chance that Rico's phone is either dead or at critical battery yeah. levels. No, it's fully charged, just like Young Kiv's offensive <laughs> defense right now. He has dominated on both sides of the ball. And for a couple of breaks, Spot Me's lucky to only be down four points right now. That extra point might come back to hurt him. Yeah, we've seen extra points be a big factor so far in this championship. Ghost Madden, apologies. Farles, why don't you take us through these highlights here and see what happened in this first half? This game was back and forth. It's been the ground game for Spot Me Please on third and two. Shaking his head is Kiv right there. He drove back down, though. This interception in the red zone, a fortunate bounce for Spot Me Please. And then Kiv comes back tough, airs it out up over the top. But Spot Me Please not to be outdone as this one is super close. 14 up, big time hit stick again from Spot Me. And then just before the half, Kiv cashes in for the touchdown. That extra point we talked about, it looked like a missed button, picked the wrong play. So we'll have to see if that one's going to come back. Yeah, at this level, pressing the wrong button with this much money on the line has got to really sting. But Rico? Quick question. Yeah. What's worse, pressing the wrong button and calling that fake field goal or calling that fake field goal on purpose and it not working? You would never call that, though. You'd call the pass version. You'd never, you'd never call that run version. Right. You, you'd ne like just not a thing it, it, any it, Madden player's ever done, so it has to be an accident. I just, I just saw one do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, before, before we jump back into this second half, let's take a closer look at young Kiv, one of the most talented Madden players in the country. My name's Shay Kivlin, a.k.a. Young Kiv. I'm from Seattle, Washington, and I'm here to win the Madden Championship. I played sports my whole life, so when I got hurt playing baseball, I had to get another competitive fix, so I started playing Madden in Madden 15. I started watching a lot of streams, and I, I saw that there's a competitive side to Madden, so that really got me hooked, and then I just got better and better, and that got me to this level. Madden has definitely turned into a really fun, exciting career. It's a lot of roller coasters, a lot of preparation, a lot of hours, but if I keep winning, it's just changing my life for the better, really. My mission at the Madden Championship is really to just prove that I'm the most consistent player. If I won the Madden Championship, it would be life-changing, really, and it would just cement me this year as one of the best, if not the best player. Well, you see Kiv's Madden career just getting started, but He's going to be around for quite a while. Yeah, he's in a very unique spot as far as being a leader of some of the youth, younger players in the community. Great attitude. Really looking forward to see how his career progresses as the games continue to evolve. I think this kid's got what it takes to be a leader for years to come. In both the Madden and the fashion community. <laughs> That's right. The fashion and the hair, always a topic of discussion. I want to remind everybody at home that if you are looking for tips and tricks to up your Madden game, you should follow Madden Ultimate Team on Twitter at EA Sports underscore Mutt. Another reminder for everybody at home, this is what these guys are playing for here. $500,000 in total prize money, $100,000 going to our winner. With every game they win, they earn more money. Looking ahead to our next match after this one, Bugs against Joke, one of the most soft-spoken guys in the community, against one of the biggest cappers. That is going to be a lot of fun. But for right now, we've got Drea on the field with Spot Me, Please. Absolutely, Dave. Well, Spot Me, this has been a back-and-forth slugfest. Mm -hmm. Overall, what do you think of the way you performed so far? Uh, I'm only down four, and I'm getting the ball. So I'm in the game. That's all I need. Uh, 
I made a few mistakes, but I, I caught a couple breaks too. So we'll see what happens in the second half. I know you wanted to clarify the whole trickeration, let everybody know what went down on that. Yeah, I think I was just excited I scored a touchdown and picked the wrong play maybe. So, <laughs> But I, I was a little confused when my uh, kicker took off with the ball. So uh, hopefully we won't let that happen again. I know your trademark is the small baby controller. I want to let everybody know, and I want you to tell them just exactly why is that enhancing your game so much to have that baby controller up here on that stage? Uh, there's nothing really to it. It's just what I'm comfortable with. It's a mental thing. It's a mental thing. It really is. I mean, All right. Well, we'll see what happens mentally for you in the second half. Best of luck. Thanks. All right. Let's send it to Scott and Gibbs. Thank you so much, Drea. Second half coming your way. 24 to 20, young Kev with the lead, able to get a field goal there in the waning seconds of the first half. Yeah, that mixed extra point is really going to shake things up here because now it's not a field goal game. Now it's a touchdown game with with uh, needing to with a four point lead for Kev, right? And that is really going to shake things up here, and it's going to mess how this second half unfolds. Said he hit the wrong button. A, a good craftsman never blames his tools, especially the baby controller. The baby controller, he's got him here. You you can't blame the baby controller. The cool thing is such a big Titans fan, and I think they actually sent that to him, right? That was the Madden Classic. Indeed, indeed they did. They were like, congratulations, here's a custom. Spot me, please. Titans Uni. <clears throat> it's fire. It Maybe same. not as fire oh, as that jacket, well, listen, but it's still fire. I'm gonna, I'm gonna shout it out again. Listen, Gucci, get on this young man right here. <laughs> He's wearing all the Gucci. He's wearing all the Gucci. What do you got on there? That's, uh, that's like I a- I think this is the Gap. I think it's the, the gap? gap. I'm pretty sure it's the gap. Did you shop for your coat in 1992? <laughs> I think I fell into the gap, man. I really do. I think I fell into the gap. There's that controller we're talking about. It's we call it the baby controller. Fisher Price, my first controller. It's <laughs> just a smaller version. And he says it's discontinued. You can't find it anywhere. Maybe he's just throwing us off the scent. Four point game. Drive's going to start at the 29. Picks up two on first down. Okay. Trailing by four. Bunch to the right. This is a special play that he sets up. This is a deep corner. He tries to open up right down that part of the field. This time's coverage is right there. Somehow throws him open. That is the gunslinger ability to its core. I mean, he gets the ball out just in the nick of time. Pressure screaming off that right edge. Kiv has to remember that setup. We'll see that play once again over the course of the second half. A little PA fork. Remember this last time he was in this formation, a little touchdown on first play. Ricky Let's Williams, this time makes an adjustment. And Krause able to respond. Nine carries for 91 yards for Ricky Williams. And two of the biggest runs that he's had this entire game have come from that formation where he cuts it off that left edge. So developing storyline there from that set. Four minutes to go in the quarter. Half number two, game number two. Winner will face Skimbo in the semifinals. And Ricky, big time on, step arm and a baby hurdle down to the 13. Ricky doing work in the interior of this line right here. You can see he gets a seal off that edge of the guard. He peels in the next level. He just Whoop. throws Pauly Krause <laughs> to the ground. Bang, bang. Look at that pass distribution, 10 passes and 10 rushes. Yeah, that's very balanced. He's 8 of 10. Let's go. Make it Let's go, 9 man. of 11. Touchdown. Spot me, please. And he regains the lead. And hopefully he knows how to kick an extra point. And quick, he does. Quick work on that one, right? But let's not forget, it, it's now a three-point game. You see the play, play fake. Five-point pass. It's now a three-point game instead of a four-point game. So this is where that missed extra point really messes up the, the, the whole scoring system of this game. For Spot Me, please. So ball at the 30 now. See if Young Kiv can answer the Spot Me touchdown. Field goal game. Nope. Able to catch the pass, but not able to put his feet in bounds. So second and ten. Play action. You gotta be careful. 
lucky to get flat. away with that one. Come on. Yeah, and what we saw Come on that on, play was a lot of coverage right there from Spot Me Please. That's where you see that forced throw into that short flat. Now, these are the tough spots to convert against Spot Me Please. Third and tens. Coverage. Bad, man. Throws it up. Oh, and Dion. Come on. Sees it go through his mitts, much to the chagrin of Spot Me Please. Yeah, Kiv, that's the right read. You can see he gets a block shift that's bringing pressure. If he just waited a little bit longer, I think he would have had space down that left sideline. Yeah, of course, we're going to get a, uh, him going for it here on fourth and ten. Quick passes here. Bang and bang. Play action. Throws it low. It's going to depend on the spot, and they will get him the first down. What a play call and decision right there by Kiv. Quick out pattern. Has a tendency to not always fall forward for the first down on those. And that'll fall oh, through Chad Johnson's hands, second and 10. And we're starting to see Spot Me now go to a little bit more of a coverage style defensive approach. I think a lot of the quick scoring plays and all the dinking dunking that we saw Kiv in that first half, you're seeing a little more coverage now from Spot Me. There's a blitz now. <laughs> Finds the open man, that's Zeke. Take it to seven yards. Give him eight, third and two. And Kiv at this point, he needs to ball the 48. About 12 yards here, feel pretty good about field goal range. And there was Anthony Barr knifing through. And here is a huge fourth and five. Gonna watch for the halfback out of the backfield. Quick out right here. And you gotta go to your key play. And that's Jory Nelson on a post for the first down at the 32. Of course, that's where he goes. No defenders over the deep middle of the field. Split the safeties. Kid clicking on all cylinders right now. See, he brings the safeties up. Gets that off. That's another first down. Give already 39 passes in this one. We're not even in the fourth quarter. Up tempo. We told you if you like someone that throws the ball, Kiv's your guy. He's had a dink and dunk against this dollar D. He's in the red zone now. Checks it down to Zeke. And one thing to note about that quick pass to the halfback there. If you're playing at home and you see that route in your playbook and you want to improve your game, one of the simple things you can do is instead of just throwing the ball to the halfback, Use the left stick and lead the pass upfield. That'll help you get extra yards with the pass. Hands it off to Ezekiel Elliott. And he'll get to the 11th. Big third and one coming up for Kiv. He's really mixing up his play calling here. Going from the draws, inside passes, short passes in the flat. Give me another draw here. Looks good. And there's on, the heat. Man. Roger shakes one off, but cannot escape. The second attempt, fourth and ten, you got to tie it up well, with the field goal. Well, let's let's revisit it, man. I mean, really, that mixed extra point, if he had made that, we'd have a four-point ball game right there. You would have seen Kiv go for it there, okay? Instead, you're seeing Kiv be able to kick the field goal, and now he's able to tie the game. Come on, Dion, do something for me. That extra point that you were talking about, Let's take a look at it. Just a misclick is really what Spot Me Please said. Uh, no one ever runs field goal run. Uh, no one ever. 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 So first and ten now for Spot Me. Got a tie game with 109 left in the third. Let's go, Ricky. And Ricky Let's gets some Ricky. room. Ricky wins at the baby. 40. Is the up. 30. He's got a man Come on. to beat. That is T.J. Green from Clemson, ran him down. Remember, he ran a 4-2-9 at the combine, and you're going to see the speed here. Yeah, he chases him down, saves a touchdown, and now Kiv got to do some work here. Ball in the eight, got to clamp down in the red zone. Spot me likes to run the ball. It'll take run first in the situation and trying to protect the back of the end zone with some of those high point passes for so accustomed to see. So first and goal at the eight. 
We still got two more games after this. Boogs and Joke coming up next. Problem and Volt will wrap the day, and Ricky will take it to the three. Yeah, fourth quarter. You take this to the fourth. That's absolutely right. Fourth quarter. You take this to the fourth. Spot me right now, 9 of 11 through the air. Buck 73, two touchdowns. This is one of those things, the situation, clock management we talked about, right, is if you're, oh, again, if you're new at home and you want, how do I improve? How do I get better to try to get to a stage like this? You don't run a play there. You take this clock all the way down to the fourth quarter. Then you call another play to start the fourth quarter to get the juices flowing here, right? This is all about clock management 101. So second and goal from the three. Spot me trying to break the tie. Five minutes to the side. Who is going to face Skembo in the semis? And Ricky gets bottled up, goes nowhere. If you're telling me that right now, going through young Kim's head right now, isn't all those single elimination losses, being on the big stage, not being able to finish, you know he also wants to get that revenge on Skimbo. You heard him say it before the game. That's something he's looking to, to do. So that's in the back of his mind right now to try to get a stop here. Third and goal. Gonna go for a quick audible. And he'll go to the air. Come on, Randy. Back in the end zone. Yes, baby. And Randy. One stop. Straight cash, homie. Come on. So difficult to stop in the red zone. The bench concept, <laughs> difficult to stop all over the field. Let's hope he didn't kick, pick the wrong button here. And this one is up, and it's good. And we got a touchdown game. You get the ball in the back of the end zone to your big receiver. Not much you can do there if you're Kib. There's so many options that he could go there. He could go those quick underneath routes that break to the outside. He has both those late breaking corners that throw in the back of the end zone. Very difficult to stop. So 4.31 to go in this one. Kib trailing by a touchdown. He's put up 333 yards. Thrown a million through times. The air. <laughs> And this time he goes to the run. Zeke Elliott can't get away from Dion. Picks up eight, second and two. Great way to start this drive. There's Kiv, 25 of 40, 342, one touchdown through the air. Up the middle, right down the middle of the field. It's Ocho Cinco, first down. Oh, excuse me, that's Antonio Gates. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to the party, Mr. Gates. Yeah. Certainly like to add another touchdown to this passing attack if you're kid. Good play. There's Randy Moss, wide open, nice playmaker down to the 20. Sweet. Now Kiv changing up his approach a little bit here. That's the first time we've seen him use playmaker outside of that short one in the first quarter. Use the playmaker upfield, gets the big play. Watch out motion inside. Swings it out, Zeke Elliott, and hello. That is Corey White. Who? Whoever is laying a big hit in the flat. <laughs> Cornerback from the Buffalo Bills making the play. Goes right back to it, though. That is going to be a touchdown. What an effort from Ezekiel Elliott. How big has Ezekiel Elliott been for young kids in the flat? Here's the effort right here. Quick pass to the flat, catch it, break a tackle, spin a Rama, Pauly Krause. Having a tough day again. Oh boy. <laughs> oh, Pauly Krause. So spot me. We'll have the ball at the 28, 322. This is what you call the bread drive. Yeah, and last time we saw Spot Me, please come to this formation. You're in about an 80-yard run. Williams right off this edge, right up there to pay dirt. Look for that same play call. So first and 10 for Spot Me. Good pass protection. He has Jordan Reed. We'll get the first down. Now spot me thinking here with three minutes and five seconds remaining the clock, he wants to try and run this game out. And Ricky Williams takes it to the 42. You got spot me please, Jason Myers, the gold kicker. So he needs to get to the, the 30. That's where you feel comfortable. 
Right, that'd be a 47-yard field goal at that point. You I'll feel be great honest. about that. It's the first of 40 wins this game. Field goal's not going to do it. Spot me hoping he's the first of 40. So second and oh, one. Yeah. He can take this all the way down and put it to the two minute warning. If he'll be patient here. Yeah, he's got to snap this. That's very important. He snapped it. He's going to get it. He is going to get it. Yeah, that's By half a second, this will go to the two minute warning. That's a great play call right there because great recognition. He snapped it. He knows that the play, when he runs it with the halfback, it's going to take about three seconds for that play to develop. Brings it down to the two. Beautiful execution from the clock manager right there for Spotty. So three timeouts for both of these guys. We are locked at 34. The difference in this one has been a wild extra point play. That was a missed click. It wasn't a missed extra point. It was just a fake field goal. I mean, I don't even know what you call it. It's, a goofy play call on an extra point. That's the difference right now. Second and nine, clock on the move. What makes Spot me very difficult to defend here is he has so many plays he can go to here. You're not accustomed to seeing some of these formations, so it's tough to key in on what he wants to do. You heard Kiv say in that last drive, I need to stop the run. It's gonna bring some safeties closer to the box. Good D. Breaking Williams. Able to shake free, had him for a loss of three, and he gets back to the 36. And this is the type of situation that Spot Me Please excels in. We've seen him do this time and time again. You get into a situation, you expect one thing, he will do the other. He takes risks, he likes high risk, high reward. Third and nine, look for him to dial up something you haven't seen all game. He's got it set up if he can get time in the pocket. He's got it set up. Got it rid of it though, and he can't. Oh, and that oh, is a no. huge sack that pushes him out of field goal range. One stop. One he stop. got it set up. You can see he wants RB streaking down that left sideline. Doesn't have enough time in the pocket. Huge sack. Fourth and 15. Ball at the 43. And he's going to go for it. A first down would win the game. Yeah, watch for pressure off this left edge. Passive pressure is going to force a rollout. Spot me better have reads over on this side of the field. Very important for him. Come on. This is it for Spot me, please. There's the passive pressure. There's the rollout. Rolls out, makes a throw. And there goes Antonio Gates to the 18-yard line. Yes. And that was huge. And there it is. You can see he had the right play set up. He has one route on the right side of the field. And Kim can't believe it. Felt like he had the perfect play call there, and he did. Time. Spot me, just better off. Got to take some knees. Got to take a few knees here. Only one timeout, as you mentioned. Kim's going to let the clock run. 106 is on the clock. We've accelerated down to 45 seconds now. So we've seen some of the two biggest plays in this game. You got that missed extra point, however you want to call it, and then a fourth and 15 for the game. He converts. So he, you know he made that mistake in that first half. Comes back, makes up for it here in the second half. But now here we go. So third and 12. <laughs> Kiv has yet to use that timeout, and maybe he's saving it for a little ice, ice, baby, vanilla, ice, ice, baby. <laughs> also look for a block here. There's the there is that timeout. I don't think that's going to cue the ice kicker, though. 17 seconds to go. I broadcast the game. I don't design the game. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not sure at what point do you get iced here. And he's going to come out and kneel it. So it's a mute point. Actually, a nice cat and mouse game. He'll take a knee. He'll run it down. He'll call his own timeout. And then he'll have an opportunity to win it in regulation. Take a look at the clock right here. Eight seconds remaining. He's going to call a timeout with four seconds to go. 
That'll be enough time to kick the field goal. The clock will expire. These are tough field goals to make in pressure situations. Jason Myers to send spot me please to the semis against Skimbo. It's a 39 yarder yes, sir, for the win. Let's go, man. Let's and go. spot me please advances to the semifinals and he'll face Skimbo. Hey, 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 hey. What the play? That was wild. Gosh, that was wild. What a game coming down to that final field goal. Quick little note, too. Left chair, nine wins. <laughs> right chair, still only one. So it's an emerging storyline. Whoever's in that left chair got a good chance to win, I guess. Spot me still undefeated against the Gun Bunch in live majors this year. Gets his first shot at Young Kiv. Comes out victorious with a last second field goal. Let's go down to Drea on the field. Thanks so much, Scott. Well, spot me. The field goal got it done for you. What was going through your mind when you split the uprights? It was crucial. It was a nerve-wracking kick. I just knew I needed to make it and go on to the next round. Yeah, well, next up you face Skimbo. <laughs> what do you think about facing him? And he's really on a roll right now, playing on fire. He's one of the best players every year. We've matched up a few times this year. I think we've probably split. So it's, it's going to be a good match. What's going to be the mentality for that one? Just try to lock up, stop that high-powered offense, and go from there. All right, best of luck. We look forward to seeing it. All right, thanks. All right, let's send it to Dave, Rico, and Zach. Thank you, Drea. 